at this point, we're going to have a red comet as the start. And that is not a cheese map. That is a map that could actually last for a long time with two good macro players. Like, get your popcorn, because we could be here for a good half hour easy. <laughs> well, at least once we get it started. I mean, might take a little while. Not sure where this is. Hmm. Is the room up yet? Please tell me the room's up yet. The room is up. Okay, let's go. Finals. Superb. I'm there. What the? How did... How does red become Comet Catcher Redux? Anyway. Red Comet, that is the actual map. The Redux. Redux. Yeah, that just seems weird that that'd be the thing that you'd go, that we would think of, but whatever. <laughs> the important thing is that we have the match. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, it's best of three, so it could be two rounds, could be three. I don't expect cheese this first map, and the second map could be whatever the players choose. Although, admittedly, this tournament has gone largely fast. The only match that's lasted longer than 20 minutes was the one between Kira and Waka. Like, the one that we didn't watch because it was like they should have been DQ'd in the first place. That's the only one that lasted any decent amount of time. Everything else has been like, 10, 15 minutes been a very fast tournament. Well, that's what you get when you have Glaive meta. That's true. Glaive is fast. Yeah. However, this... We are getting Glaives on Red Comet. Yeah, yo, Glaive meta. Glaive meta for sure. Red Comet, you never see anyone... Like, used to be, you'd have just rovers and tanks. That's it. Now Glaives. Right. Everyone going for Glaives. <laughs> I think I, I just like don't quote me on this, but I think Cloakies may be overpowered. You know, I think you might have a point. I, I think you're onto something there. They, yeah. they might be a touch overtuned. A slight, tiny bit, yeah. But but really, I, I I'm not entirely sure what to base this claim on. Like uh, having all games today using cloakies just just doesn't seem enough to to decide that they're overpowered. Yeah, I'd have to check anyway, what the, the results game. were. Yeah, to the game. <laughs> so yeah, we're getting a little bit more success yeah. on the rating than Fieldos, but actually, that is a huge. That's not a but. That's a big thing. Sigaro, so, they have some openings as well. They could get through this Lotus fairly easily. And no, never mind. Lotus is a bit too far. No, they can't get through the Lotus, but they can still contain the rest of it and stop Field House from expanding. Well, Sagato, on the other hand, expands quite happily over to the northeast. Very. But you can see, again, the initiative of Sagato, which closes the relatively safe avenue of expansion. And now. Uh, oh, no, no, no. This was for. Oh, they got those alive. Yeah, well, barely, but the commander is very upfront and has nothing upgraded. It's not enough. The commander probably won't die unless there's about eight glaives or so. Four glaives wouldn't be enough just from the support glaives that are in the back. Fieldhouse would pull them forward. But it's still a bit of a threat. It still does force Sagato to focus... Oh, sorry, Fieldhouse to focus a bit more on their own glaives, allowing Sagato to switch over to Reavers, and that will be extremely valuable should they meet up. And they very well might. Or, well, no, never mind. No, 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 no. Fieldhouse is avoiding that. They're trying to go around the back. Which is still going to be spotted, though. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. Ah, radar. radar. Saves lives. And radar. Radar saves all the lives. And now, there's, instead of a decisive five-glaive raid, this is a 
lazy five glaive stroll into I don't know what. Into one glaive, making their life remarkably miserable and actually managing to kill one of them despite the five one disadvantage into an imp. Hey, same as last time on Trojan Hills, the imp on the five glaive rush from Fielthos, stopping it while at the same time, Sigeto coming in with a bit of a two pronged attack. I mean, the frontal assault here is going to have a harder time getting in, but the glaive's up back, distracting Fieldhouse's army and just gradually re reducing it. But it looks like the tick is a bit too far behind to do as much damage or to get as much value as we saw in Trojan Hills. Not to mention, the Reavers also not going to be able to get much mileage, having been destroyed by the Lotus. So overall, Fieldhouse is having a slightly easier time this game than they did on the game on Trojan Hills. There are at the moment, there were like three different places where glaives were fighting glaives. <laughs> it's it's so much micro, so much, so and, so so intensive. And both players are handling it fairly well, but at this point, Sigero does have the slight attrition advantage and has had a fairly large economic advantage this entire game. So they're what are they looking at for unit value advantage? It looks like metal use. They're pretty. They're at a dead heat. Unit value. Bildos actually has a slight advantage, but again, dead heat. So. Throughout all this, Sigero hasn't really managed to get a huge advantage yet. They've been doing a fair bit of damage and maintaining map control. And that's the biggest thing. They're going to turn that map control into, into economy. And they're also forcing a lot of defense off of Fielthos. So they're turning Fielthos's slight fear into more static defenses, which means that Sigero has even more room to maneuver. But it's cool how both players... Um, just make exactly enough uh, energy as as their metal. Like they they don't over produce uh, energy. I'm not sure this I agree with that. I mean, I get it, but at the same time, reclaim is going to be a thing within the next few minutes. So probably they'll build up once the reclaim Definitely. comes in. We do see but that at the moment. At the moment, it's like every single point of metal is is important. Yes, that's true, and that is. Something Sigero is taking advantage of and playing it very close to the point of possible excess, but just barely not excessing. Like, what you're talking about there, like both players are doing exactly that. And yeah, Sigero actually is going to excess slightly, but yeah, it's not quite. So close to excess. Like, are they actually excessing? Oh, no. 14 metal excess. No, they're just, they're threading the line. Sheesh. That is just... That is surprising. And now Sigera is making a bit more E. Exactly only when it's needed. Yeah, especially when the reclaim might be coming up. Well, not really coming up anytime soon, but certainly when they're going to start getting more metal because they're building up. Yeah, that's exactly perfect. Wow, I never even really thought of that. Like, it's a, That's a thing to do, but for a lot of players, like for most people watching, I imagine just keeping the metal... Keeping the metal below the energy is the tricky part. Like, remembering to build energy in the first place. So this... I'm glad you're pointing this out, because, like, showing what players who are really skilled at the game will do to eke out every little tiny advantage from their economy. That is, you know, the difference between a good player and a great player. It's also about um, priorities. Uh, personally, I prefer to make more E. I like to have overdrive to get bit more punch from my home axes. Um, but Sigero thinks that th at the moment it's more important to have more units and not spend energy, um, which will cost him a little bit of metal, but maybe in the long run it means more metal because of more ground control. It's, it's a matter of priorities and decisions and, you know, well, I agree with their decision at this point. Fieldhouse is doing the same thing, and that's giving Sigero a slight advantage, which is meaning they are going to be able to hold and push and take some metal, rather than banking on not worrying about, or banking on not getting hit. Because the problem is, because Fieldhouse is running a massively aggressive force, well, like right now, with all the glaives coming and getting rid of the Ronin, Sigero yeah, needs to be able to rebuild amazing. from that. They wouldn't be able to rebuild from that if they had a metal, like, or wouldn't even be able to fight that if they had put the metal into solar plants a bit sooner. And didn't have the Ronin. At least the Ronin that were there were able to pull back into the defenses that are there and able to make everything work just that little bit better so Sigero can at least stay in the fight, even though they did lose the attrition advantage. Sigero still hasn't, for both players, 
still haven't uh, expanded in the safe-ish expansions. Well, it looks like Filthos is going for that right now, but that is certainly not the priority. And I think considering how fast glaives are and considering how much both players have basically made this map a tiny map, this red common of all maps make it feel small. I don't think they think that those southeast and northwest expansions are that safe just because that's a path that's harder to defend from your main base. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, Digger is also expanding it uh, front to back, actually. And you can see a huge glaive force going south. Yeah, and so can Field Thoughts at this point. They have the radar coverage of it, so they know exactly what's happening. And it's a matter of micro, but the imp already in there is able to stun them. Vast <gasps> oh majority of that force. That is going to give Filthos a huge advantage. That could give Filthos the game if played right. I like that Segeto is pulling everything back to at least stop Filthos from turning this into a forward push. And maybe even get rid of a caretaker. Is that going to happen? No, the caretaker survives just barely. Oh, that would have been huge. That caretaker went down. Still, Segeto has the economic advantage, but losing all those glaives. Yeah, this was quite bad. That is a huge blow. Field us now 2,000 metal on attrition advantage. Unit value is again a dead heat. Thanks to that... Thanks to that imp. That's the only reason it's a dead heat. If it weren't for that, Segeto would probably have a 1,000 to 2,000 metal unit value advantage. So It's the same as the roaches that we've seen earlier that got Segura to um, turn the game. I think it was against Wesley, I can't remember. That sounds about right. Yeah, but the Roach is then. It's just that ro sorry, imps and snitches are so useful in, in making comebacks. That being said, though, it looks like that's exactly what isn't in place for Segura up north. They do have a Reaver that will be able to get in position reasonably quickly, and a lot of the Glaives are going down to the static defenses, but there will still be a Metal Extractor loss and a handful of Solar Plants on top of that, with the Lotus also going, and the Reaver cannot catch up. So the Lotus going down is huge, and nothing is going to stop this. The Reaver is trying to get close, but the Metal Extractors are done, but at the same time, in the front lines, this is going far better for Segura, as they are able to maintain a decent position on the front lines, but with the Reavers possibly being pushed back, that gives the Glaives room to get rid of the Ronin, and that means the Ronin are just overextending. Overextending immensely, which is opening things up for Filthos like nothing else. Yeah, it seems like Filthos is getting the upper hand here. Very, very nice play. The stick exactly gave the breathing room in order to change the initiative from Segura to Felpus. At this point, though, it's also pretty clear that Segura was not pushing that much into the factory. They do have enough metal here to push into the factory to avoid excess, or at least avoid accessing too much. But during that fight, they were repairing a lot more than building, and it kind of makes sense why they were doing that, but I think if they were building, that would have helped a bunch, both for this counterattack and to stop the Glaive sooner. Because now that they're on the back foot, they don't have much of an army to really hold being on the back foot compared to Fieldhouse, despite the fact that Segeto has historically been having a metal advantage. There's so, 4k metal on the ground, by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's huge. Whoever gets that is going to take this game. And it looks like Segeto is just trying to make sure that that is not Fieldhouse by stopping everything from the north, but that's... that is potentially a suicidal attack with this Reaver here. Good micro coming in from Segeto to try to get away from that Reaver, but that does close off the Northwest. Now, not to mention over in the center, I mean, oh, Segeto really getting things lined up one by one, and that's likely a rally. Yeah, that's a rally point thing. Kind of would like them to change that rally point, because that is letting their units die. Just one by one, yeah. walking into an army that's ready to kill them. Damn, now no, this seems lost for Segura. Yeah, the only way I can think they could possibly get back in there is if they properly regroup. The Knights aren't a bad idea, but they need to regroup. And at this point, they haven't rebuilt the, the rally points to have a regroup. They've been doing it manually. Which is fine until it gets heavily into the combat. At which point, it's not going to be fine at all. I mean, at least Segura still has the economic advantage. That is the one thing, but that... That's tenuous. 
that's not enough. Now the knights will be able to expand and so it's like attack a bit, but they do. no. No, where's where, there needs to be more yeah. support. Like there's there's not enough. See. Too much static defense. The yeah. commander is built too well. Like light park beam commander against no nah, that, that would win. That's gonna win no problem. And Ronians have a lot of damage, like surprisingly a lot of damage. Yeah, this is why I wish that Sigero had managed to regroup their forces, because if they got all those glaives they built in one big mass, they'd be winning this. But those glaives went in one by one, and now we're seeing the glaives are coming in in a bit of a mass, and they are managing to get rid of a lot of these Ronin, and while there are some Reavers coming in to deal with it, it's not enough, and as long as the Reavers are taken care of by the Ronin of Sigero, Fieldos could still take a lot of damage, and possibly lose this economic advantage that they've been building up. Yes, this is actually not bad. Not bad at all. Actually, uh, I would say that Sigero's pushing... They're fighting for the initiative, and they're just about to take it. Oh, but it comes down to these glaives. If these glaives go down, then the initiative is lost. But it looks like they're managing to get rid of the reinforcement wave, so that is something huge. Oh, nice. Yeah, if they can flank around the back and get rid of those Ronin and avoid the Reaver, they're good. Or... No, the, that... I do not agree with that, no. Sigero. Going in the back line like that... I mean, it could work. There's not a whole lot of defenses, but there's enough that these glaives won't find much. Like, this was really, really great for attrition, but uh, just not enough. No, and the glaives not being focused on. Managing to get a metal extractor here and there. At least that's something. But not getting rid of the caretaker. Not getting rid of the ronin from behind. Like, I really would rather have seen them flank behind, get all these ronin, take care of all of them with the glaives, and then deal with everything else. Like, yeah, there would have been a Reaver, but at the same time, six Glaives do kill a Reaver. So, it's not an unwinnable fight. It's not the best fight, but he'll win. But given the way things went, I'm not sure. Hammers are up, however. Sigeto did build those while we weren't looking, and has managed to break a little bit of the South Contain. Possibly opening things up and possibly giving some metal extractors avail to Sigeto. But then again, look at Belthos's economy. Yeah, the economy is just huge. <laughs> and gift. now... Now they're gone. I mean, the slings, they did what they could, <laughs> but it wasn't enough, and those glaives did everything... and did everything right. So... That's unfortunate. So now the bottom, that south area, that's basically still completely unmanageable. Like, Field House's commander is still able to just continue to creep forward in the south side of the map, while the north side of the map continues to be taken by the Ronin. That weren't killed by the glaives. More than 7k reclaim at the moment. On the map. I think the that's... Even. I have a feeling that we're going to end this game without that being taken at Or without much of it being taken. That is... Makes a lot of sense. Although that being said, if Fail Thoughts manage... Or Sigaro manages to get it, they could even out the current unit value disadvantage. Because 7k is the unit value disadvantage right now. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, it's not... It's not feasible, really. Felsos did better protecting the expansion. Like, you could see the south expansion by Sigero was raided by Rokos, or something like that. And this is, this is very, very lost. I'm just surprised that Sigero has been pushing as much as they have into it, because it's one of those things where you just... Sometimes you just gotta abandon an expansion, just let the static defense be, because you know you can't get through it easily, and there's other parts of the map that you might be able to get to. Like, assuming, mm -hmm. assuming even economy, your opponent's focused on defense, that means they haven't focused on something else. Probably their army. Or Definitely. something in their back line. But, at this point, Sigero doesn't have the resources to handle any of that. Right. I'm, I still think that the critical imp was very yeah. critical. Yeah, that imp over there that killed about a dozen glaives. If it weren't for that, Sigero would have won by now. It's very, very possible. Well, this should teach you. Don't send all your glaives in one lob. Especially not against Cloaky or shields. Like, that's... Yeah. That's the thing. It's the tension between, you know, concentration of force. You want your units to be at the same time. And, like, uh, trying to spread out risks. Not having all your eggs in one 
basket. Well, it avoids having all your eggs in one basket, which is what the M takes advantage of. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it doesn't it does mean that if you're getting if you get hit by anything else, that anything else will probably kill you. Yeah. Or at least damage your force yeah, before it becomes it. Like, and yeah. <sighs> not not yeah, well. But that is Sagato down. That is round one to Fieldas and Red Comet. So Fieldas, hey, the second rematch for them starting to go their way. Now Sigero picks the map. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, oh, that's grand finals. Yeah, I don't know what Sigero's going to pick because I feel like Sigero is going to be. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what they would pick. They have a lot of options to choose from. They might choose Trojan Hills again. But I don't know if that's an option. <laughs> Interesting. Hopefully, um, I don't know, something. Something with action. Not the water map, please. Google Frog is now saying that maybe instead of slings and knights, Sigero could make fireworks. Switch. Oh yeah, the fact switch. Yeah, fire. Yeah. Oh, fireworks would have been awesome. Yeah, against the rockos and against the, the turrets and every, everything. Mm hmm. Although it's 19k before you get the Firewalker. Like 1k for the factory, and then until you get the Firewalker, it's so much metal. So yeah, much Google Frog metal. might be thinking in terms of the 600 cost factory. I'm not sure. I think uh, Google Frog remembers what. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, the math checks out in terms of like the slings and ha the slings and knights could have been a factory and a Firewalker or two. Like that that is entirely valid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at any rate, we have Well, what are we gonna have? I really don't know. Because this Oh Baron! Oh hey, there it is. Yeah. Sooner or later, we would have Baron, and who knows how long it's going to take. That could be five minutes. That could be 30 minutes. Yeah. Baron is intense. Small. It's in your face. It's like you spit and you hit enemy, and it's... Not only that, it's also just the way the map is built. It's small, but there's a lot of hills, so it, it tends to become Porkfest. Um, in some ways, yes, but, um, remember that everything is pathable. Everything. Right. Just, just, even the hills are not, as they sometimes defend the attackers more than the defenders. That is a very good point. And I think that's what we're going to see as well. And really, I'm kind of curious what's going to happen, like, who's going to take this, because... Oh no, I don't know, because Fieldhus... Okay, Fieldhus doesn't like this map, so Sigero might actually be able to pull this into <laughs> game three. Depending on how this goes. Well, let us see. So, Cloakies versus Cloakies? Cloakies versus Cloakies seems like... Actually, I don't know, this map... This map is popular with shields. True. True. Well, it historically Although... has been. Yeah. So I could see it. I don't know, but then again, we have seen a lot of odd choices. But Filthos is going for Cloakie, and shields are coming for Skero. Spite. Oh, yeah. Very. And at this point, we have, well, early bandit versus early conjure. Ooh, very early conjure from Filthos. Filthos just wants the economy right off the bat. 
Well, I can understand why. I mean, on this map, it's tricky, because in this map, you don't have a whole lot of metal. Like, unlike most maps, the metal extractors are largely plus one, not plus two. Um, but, you know, the, with the base and how it's structured, you cannot defend everything in a really um, simple way. Don't, mm -hmm. You cannot put a single loses. So I also like to make a very fast constructor and send my commander to take the two far away maxes. And that's... That's something that I would expect Fieldhouse would do, but it, currently the constructor's idle. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. Still, though, Fieldhouse is no, protecting what's likely the approach yeah. path. Like, this is the approach path. You go over the hill, right here, and Fieldhouse knows it. I don't think one Lotus is yeah. enough, but... Depends on how the bandits come in. Yeah. Lotus and Commander are more than enough. Oh, yeah, Lotus plus Commander. Yes, for sure. I didn't... I wasn't sure if Fieldhouse moved their Commander, but they're... No, they're just being clever. Line is sighting the commander behind the solar collector, so the bandits can't easily kill it. Uh, oh. And now it's expanding north. And um, Feldos now is playing around. I'm worried about this uh, Sigura's constructor. That may be in a bit of a pickle. Well, it's oh, got radar nice. coming up. Oh, yeah, that... Get assist. That was amazing timing. I mean, Sigero could not have known that was the best time to attack, but it was the best time to attack. Like, getting the 1.8 and possibly getting another. Nope, not getting the other. So Fieldhouse can rebuild, but that still slows down Fieldhouse's commander. That still slows down the expansion. So Sigero still has the economic advantage. Right. But at the same time, I mean, Fieldhouse can still push forward. Now they have a bunch of glaives. It's a question of can those glaives survive against the bandits? And the answer, I think, is yes with the sheer numbers. Why is Sigero making so much men so much energy? I don't know. They're not reclaiming anytime soon. I'm not really sure what the motivation is. Weird. Because we were talking last game about how much the players were being extremely careful about not overbuilding metal, but now yeah. we're just seeing Sigero with ten extra energy. Yes, something is rather inexplicable. They might be thinking overdrive. I think they're just thinking that they can't easily take position. And this map, this map is a map without a whole lot of metal extractors. So I could see overdrive being their motivation. Oof. Yeah, but but overdrive is like weaker on smaller maxes. True. But it also means they don't have to worry about the fact that, that there's glaives from Failthos <sighs> just controlling the entire map, stopping them from expanding at all, pretty much anywhere. And even over here, there's glaives with the lotuses over to the south, defending on top of the glaives over to the north that are wrecking everything that F that Sigero is building up, stopping Sigero from even getting close. And if that, oh, if that combat goes down, and it will go down, that is the entire expansion force. The commander is nowhere near here. It's up north, but that's it. There are no other builders that are actively expanding. The only one available is the one that's assisting the factory, which honestly, at this point, I'm not sure why it is. I mean, 12, okay, it's a bit faster to use 12 metal per second into the factory completely. <laughs> But Not really, because the commander is using it. Yeah, that's also true. That's yes. very true. The commander is using most of it. And so that means that that could have been an expanding convict, and it could still be an expanding convict. But currently, yeah. it is uh, on, the, on the assist build. A, a convict doesn't even have to expand. You know, it can protect bandits. It can do mm -hmm. lots of useful stuff. Um, it's a walking shield. Yes. It can save lives. Robot lives. Robot lives matter. They, well, they do. And that's the whole point of the game. Yes, they certainly matter, because if you don't think they matter, you lose. That is exactly. how you win this game. But looks like that is not what Sigero's doing. They're trying to make them matter, and they are trying to defend them as best as possible, but Lotuses are there, and Fieldhouse is well set up, and it's just, I'm surprised Fieldhouse is being as cautious as they are with these glaives. I don't know if they're expecting snitches to be built, or if they just want to make sure they have the perfect position or just trying to keep as many glaives alive as possible. I think they might really just be trying to preserve their glaives as best as they can. Just to have I'm that large army. I'm actually surprised that no snitches has been built and no outloads and no, nothing to do. Don't with be surprised glaives. any longer. Don't be surprised any longer. There is a snitch coming up. Ah. Uh, yeah. There well, it's it's there. It has been built, it's going to the center. Wrong place. Yes. Oh, no, well, no, 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 no. Back. It's good. That is a good snitch. 
But at the same time, Fieldos is clearly well aware that could happen. And is being remarkably careful. This is still... This is still dangerous, but the Snitch hasn't managed to find the position it needs. It's this is the best time, though! Uh, exposed. No, no, it's not needed anymore. Oh, that's true. It's really? it's redundant now, but it was the best time before, because, I mean, when the Glaives were being distracted by the Bandits, the Snitch could have just walked in. As I, don't, I don't think it was fast enough. I'm not sure. Yeah, and as it is, it, there's a 500 metal advantage for Field Toss. I mean, 500 metal at this stage, that's 10 Glaives. Well, Ooh. that's a few glaives less. That's a few glaives less. But not that many. Nowhere near as effective as it could have been. And still, all the local matchups here. The only thing that might be a, an advantage for the bandit is right here next to the lotus. And the glaives are going to take that with... No, they're not. What? Really? They're going to leave the lotus to die? That's risky. That is really risky. And I don't think it paid off. Nice. Yeah, we've got Segero getting a massive amount of damage nice. done. Taking some chunks out of Field Toss's economy just because that one decision off Field Toss for the Glaive positioning. And it's the only thing really opened up. The rest of this is still its pretty much something that can't be taken, but at this point, Field Toss can't win this. These bandits have all the free reign. Yeah, Sigura is really... He's re, has really come back, come back... Yeah, came back from the disadvantage. This was very nice. Um... And now he's reclaiming this yeah, 500 in base. Yeah, 500 in that base. There's 300 near Fieldhouse's commander, though. The Fieldhouse is going to go back and take. So that's not going to be entirely one-sided. But that's still huge. However, the Reaver switch over here with no response with rogues. Not yet. Thug Law is coming up, but that's not going to be the I most did. effective. Should work. It should. It should at least help. But the big question is what happens in the <laughs> southwest. Because now that that's been built up, we have a full map split. A couple metal extractors have not been rebuilt yet, but there's a full map split. Field House oh. has some reclaim. Sigara has some reclaim. Ooh. And now the bandits are gone. Oh my god. And this was brutal. Yeah, that's fairly close to Field House's base. This this conjurer could have felt daring. Pick up 500 metal. Like that's a good minute and a half of being at a 10 metal per second advantage. Or just attack, or both. I'm just surprised. This, why is this Conjurer <laughs> not moving? Or reclaiming, or whatever else. Like, this Conjurer has all this reclaim available, and it's not taking it. What the heck? It's very simple, because Filthus is concentrated on attacking. I mean... And it's okay. Because at the moment, I think attacking and making Sigira not... I don't know. Having less metal is more important than having more metal yourself. That's true. And actually, Sigero's commander is right there, so ultimately, it wouldn't have been a bad idea to reduce some of the metal that could have been taken, but at the same time, it does mean that Sigero's commander is not going to be fighting and killing those conjurers, or that one conjurer. Of course, the problem now is that these glaives are going down, but at the same time, more attacks coming in here with the Reavers. Why are the Reavers going south? Oh, I see, avoiding the rogues. That makes sense. Baiting the rogues into fighting the glaives and dying. Ah, nice. Yeah, good positioning on Field Toss's part. They really... I'm a bit surprised, actually, they, that we didn't see more play like this earlier on. Because Field Toss, these last couple games, has been playing amazingly well. Whereas in the earlier games, it felt like they were just warming up. Compared to how this is playing out. Well, <laughs> it's different hours for different people. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Field us, it's like 8 o'clock, so it's no big deal. And that's not so true for Seguero. I think Seguero, it's currently 1 or 2 in the morning. Yeah, it's, it's. I think it's my time zone. Not sure. So at this point, it's... Yeah, Field us has a fairly strong advantage. Unit value advantage is 2,000 metal. 33% metal... No, 25% metal advantage. Depending how you look at it. And that's on top of the fact that they have the units to deal with the Thug Law Ball and to deal with the Lotuses. And, and everything is positioned advantage. well. Yeah, everything. Yeah, this is this is not looking good for Spear. I thought he had it kind of turned over, but I don't know. This, they did this seem to. The Thug Law yeah, Ball wasn't a bad idea, but Fieldhouse just saw it coming and already was responding to it. 
now the southwest is gone right. like field thoughts just is not giving ground the thing is is that unlike unlike some of the earlier games field thoughts is gaining ground and not losing it they're just like, like the red comet for instance kind of went back and forth because you know people would gain ground in one spot and lose it in another but in this match field thoughts there's a few raids here and there that are dealing some damage but by and large field thoughts is not trading ground they're just gaining it yeah. and anything oh. that Sick arrow takes that just means reclaim for field thoughts. But yeah, I think I think I I can point the exact moment where where Filthos had the upper hand. It probably was when Sigera didn't pick Loki's. <laughs> <laughs> I think they would have had a chance. I think Shields has a chance, but we nah, didn't see nah. felons come up that would have helped deal with the glaives. We didn't see the rogues come up when the when the Reavers first came in, we didn't see that many snitches. I mean, snitches would still be useful. To put snitches around the map and just take care of all this stuff, we still have one. Two, actually. But it just, there weren't enough. Three or four would have been enough like put across the map to really be valuable. But that's not what happened, and Failthos takes the tournament. Sigera second place. Um, and that puts Wesley West in third. third and... Yeah, very nice. Well, congratulations to everyone. And especially a to wonderful. Yeah. Especially to Wesley, because we hadn't heard of them before. And they just went and basically nearly took the tournament. Yeah, it was um everybody really showed really very, very good play throughout the tournaments. I think we had quite a few, you know, uh, close games. We did. Especially in the, especially near the end, but it was a lot of fast games. It was like we had it was close and close and close, and then someone found an advantage and won. Like it was this, um, it was that knife edge type of play, where everything just sort right. of falls apart if anything goes wrong. Right. Um. Uh, it's well, the fact that everybody uses cloakies and it's a very very fast factory. It means and. Even, you know, Glaives, they have so much DPS, yet they have very little health. Things can go like a pendulum from one side to the other, just like with one wrong micro move. And, well, these players don't make many wrong micro moves. They, they, they know their stuff. They That's very true. And that was the thing we saw before, is that it really couldn't... There wasn't much room for micro advantage just because people knew how to deal with this stuff. Maybe people knew how to make everything work to their advantage in the small ways, but then because both players are doing it, well, neither of them is going to manage to find a particular advantage. They're just going to keep even. Until someone makes more mistakes than the other. Pretty and much. then... And then it's over 20 glaives. 20 glaives. That's what you need. So, I believe I will go to sleep. Yeah, I think now's now's kind of done. So anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, and hope you enjoyed that. Again, congratulations to Field Thosk and, well, everyone, really. But, of course, Field Thosk getting first place, Sigero second place, and Wesley, who we haven't seen before, getting third place. Yeah. So until next time, thanks for watching, and have a good night.